All right, I get this question all the time about what a ladybird deed is. So I just thought I'd show you what the actual document is, kind of take some of the, the magic and allure out of what an attorney does with the ladybird deed. Uh, this is for Texas, uh, so your state might not have a ladybird deed. Texas does. Texas is a great way to avoid probate, to protect from uh, government interference, whether through Medicaid, protection, or recovery. Um, it's a useful tool for a number of things. It might not be useful for your situation, which is why I would always recommend getting an attorney to evaluate your situation, but this, this is at least what the document is. So in the law, we call this a special warranty deed with a reservation of an enhanced life estate. You're going to have a deed just like any other. You have the date, the grantor is the person that actually owns the property right now, the mailing address, the grantee, someone receiving the property. Consideration is just what's being exchanged for the property. More times than not, this is just a gift. Property, very, very important. Do not try to fill out this information for yourself. This has to be a legal description. That is not just the address. That's not just on the tax roll. That has to be the legal description for this document to be valid. And then this is the language that we use as far as reserving the full possession, benefit, and use of the property for the remainder of both grantors. So in this case, it could be a husband and wife. They both own the property as community property. It doesn't matter if you think it's community property. It doesn't matter if you think that because both spouses are on the deed that the surviving spouse gets the property. It depends on your estate plan and whether you have kids from a previous marriage. So again, contact a licensed Texas attorney to figure out your own situation here. In this particular case, they're reserving a life and state, but they're also agreeing for themselves, their heirs of signs and legal representatives, all of whom will be bound that on the death of either grantor, his or her interest in the community property prescribed above will become the property of the survivor and will vest in and belong to the surviving spouse. We call that a joint tenancy with the right of survivorship in the law. Then throughout the rest of this paragraph, basically just says you own the property for the rest of your life. You can do whatever you want to with it. Hence the enhanced life estate verbiage there. Exceptions, conveyance, and warranty. Attorneys have different thoughts and feelings on this in particular. You have the grant. This is the language in which the property is actually conveyed. Uh, and then you have the signature blocks that has to be signed, notarized, and, and uh, recorded in the, the county of record. So that's a ladybird deed. Another good reminder here, like we talked about, just because a, uh, a piece of property is owned by a husband and wife does not mean that the surviving spouse automatically takes the property. We run into this all the time, and people do not understand this. If you got kids from a previous relationship, they're not all within the same marriage, then if you don't have a will, if you don't have any other kind of a state plan put in place, then those kids are going to get half of your interest in the property when you die. So if you want your surviving spouse to take everything, take all the property, you need to get a plan in place. That's what this is for. So I hope this was useful. Uh, if you got any questions, you can uh, comment below. I have a link or something that you can click on and you can get some more information. Thanks.